Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, you may notice no camera. I'm, uh, I am working on like an update to my overlays and stuff, but the reality is my MacBook is just never really gonna be able to handle all of that rendering. So uh, I'm working on it, but it's gonna have to wait more or less until I get the new streaming PC. Which with some things with my business, I don't know when that's gonna be. I was hoping around April, but it might not be until sometime this summer or even later. Um, but yeah. We have, uh, we have the mic I use for the living room and stuff, so that's kind of cool. I don't like how I'm sounding here. I'm just gonna mute myself. Well, I guess I don't need to mute myself. Um, let's, let's turn myself down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but well, we're going back to the Grand Prix. It's been quite a while since I played Mario Kart on stream, but, uh, I've been playing Jack X. Which is, it's okay. I, 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 I mean, you can watch those streams archived to see how I feel about it. But, uh, suffice to say, it's a bit of an annoyance. Um, okay, we're on 150 cc's. Gotta be my boy Iggy, of course. Um, hold on, let's see how it looks. Traction is good, but I want I want that speed, baby. I want that speed. Uh, let's go the high rule wheels. Let's go. Let's go with that. Then uh, egg cup is what I was working on. Right. We're trying to get 100%, which means I have to get first in all four tracks. So that's gonna be interesting. Actually, why did I I turned up my brightness as if I was gonna use the uh. Studio lights. That's just gonna hurt my eyes over time. So, you know, apologies for any handling noise, because it's still, it's still, uh, the boom arm I've had. I, I plan to get another one of those too, but that's a much lower. There we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm remembering things now. It's been it's been a minute, but it's like riding a bicycle. It's like riding a Mario Kart. Okay, my first few attempts are probably not gonna be that great. <laughs> but that's just this is Mario Kart baby. Ooh. Um, I do have bigger plans for the stream and I'm working on on YouTube a lot more, because I, I I liked doing the unboxings and the movie reviews for the most part, but in reality I liked it because it was fairly easy. I just slapped it together. Hey, what the hell? Come on, man. I wasn't even involved in that. Um, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be challenging myself. I'm gonna do some like reviews. I can already tell from the way I'm scripting it that it's gonna be kind of derivative of shut up and sit down. Which is, you know, can't be helped, because I'm a huge fan of their work. I feel like they are basically the best in board game reviews. But uh, I, I do have my own aesthetic in mind. You know, I'm going to use some, like, paper puppets. A little, like, pup like little drawing on a dowel that you can flip around to do different stuff. Like, I, I just, just going to do some of that. You know, I can draw all right. I think it should be fun. I hope you all will join me for that. Um, since I'm making a, a big switch to racing games, for the most part, like I'm still gonna do other games, and uh, I, I guess I should address the fact it is the last Saturday of the month, which is when I'd normally do, Ah, oh, come on, Bowser. Dry Bowser. Uh, which is normally when I would do a marathon, but just didn't have time this month. I did like a big audiobook project a couple weeks ago and that just like exhausted me. I had like really bad posture for all of it. So my um, like messed up my neck and shoulders for like basically a whole week. I'm only now starting to feel okay again. I had to get like a new pillow. Uh, pretty nice one with like memory foam and stuff. Um, and yeah, getting stressed out over probably having to do more marketing because my main platform made a big change that like really 
really wrecks my my workflow so i'm gonna have to kind of i'm gonna have to diversify which you always should anyways and i've been lazy about it so you know submit to more agencies i am represented by ben's uh ben's talent out of tampa but i haven't really gotten anything from them as of yet so i'll probably check in with them beginning of the month and we're restarting <laughs> second oh, i was very close though Yep, yep, we're starting from the top. That's okay. But, uh, yeah. Need to get some more regional agencies. Probably get at least one in one of the larger markets. Um. Just, just gotta keep working, man. Gotta do a bunch of work. You know, probably hopefully stream more. I'd love to stream more. It's just kind of difficult with, um, with, uh, everything I have set up. You know? But since this platform, like, the main reason it was difficult is because this platform was so demanding of my time. I think that was early. No, nope. that was right. It was so demanding of my time and, like, expected such quick turnarounds, like, 30 minute turnarounds, which is, you know, honestly pretty absurd. Um. So if I'm. I'll still probably do some stuff with them, but. I'm gonna be just looking for other clients. Gonna be doing my own stuff to try and basically market myself a little more through social media. Uh, probably gonna do more TikTok. Because I love watching TikTok. And I've, I've enjoyed the ones I've made, but it's been, um... It's tricky. You know? It's really hard to do voiceover stuff on social media if you don't do impressions and you don't have, like... Uh, a radio voice, you know? Like, there's, there's this guy, S. Johnson voiceovers, which I did his demo back in the day, um, and he, he sounds amazing. He's got this incredible movie trailer voice, and he's really funny, so, you know, he totally deserves every bit of attention he's got, but... Or, like, uh, Chris something? I forget what the, the her last name is. Um, but she's a really good impressionist, does like a great Johnny Bravo, and like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Um, so, being able to do stuff like that, it's fun, and it's like, gets you a lot of attention on social media, but if you're like me, where you do your own character voices, or like a lot of more subtle advertising and narration stuff, it's like, it's kind of tricky to work that out, and I'm really trying to think of how I can utilize that. Um, I think in terms of this, because I'm moving over to racing games more, and racing games, there's a lot less commentary necessarily. Like, there's things you can say about what's happening, but especially when you get into, like, long grinds, like, are gonna happen with, uh, with the Grand Prix here, which I do plan on 100%ing at some point. Oh, man. Ah, oh, it's, it's all these tight little curves in this map really get me. Ah, no! Ah, that's, that might be, well, only halfway through. I might be able to handle it. It's not a very long, oh, no, I think that's it. But uh, yeah, I want to do it maybe like a, a more of a radio show thing. And for that, um, I don't know. I, I wanted to do that when I had Andrew co-hosting on most of the episodes, but unfortunately, he is not able to handle that workload, and I don't blame him. It's like, it's a lot to be able to stream regularly. I appreciate all he did. And uh, I have a friend, Christian Hansen, who I'd love to do it with, but like he's just not in a very solid home situation, so, you know, he's unfortunately unavailable. Um, all right, first one done. Here we go, Excite Bike Arena. I almost got a world record on Excite Bike Arena once on the time trials, but uh, yeah, it's tricky. It's real tricky because it's a real short one, so it's like every every tiny little bit you can do is like gonna shave off like a little second. Um, that's another thing. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much because we're still working on it, but um, I'm working with a guy who's like one of the top track mania racers. Like we, he uh, is gonna have me doing narration for his YouTube videos he's doing, which is gonna be kind of like. You know, he's gonna do like a course on how to 
how to do Trackmania with his method um, as a world record holder, and then also, uh, you know, some video essays and stuff, kind of like Summoning Salts does, which we, we had a whole thing going back and forth. I thought we were going for more hype, like story time thing, maybe like a sequelitis, which is how I would handle it if, if it was my thing. But he wants it way more chill and like naturalistic, and I, I'm totally down for that. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm working with him. We're gonna do some stuff coming up, so get hyped for that. I think it'll go pretty well. Like it's his writing is pretty really solid. Like I really enjoyed the script. Um, we're getting we're we're at the point where uh, I've done the second major take. And he's he's busy for the weekend here, but um, yeah, we're we're in revisions on it, so I'll have that over to him before too long, and then he will uh, he will just be the the one handling the editing and everything. And I'm pretty stoked on it. I'm really excited. I want to play Trackmania, but unfortunately, because I don't have a PC, I have a Mac. Uh, it's not supported. And there's no console version as of yet. So, don't have the option, but once I get a PC, I'm definitely going to get into it. Um, anything else? I mean, that's the big thing, is I just want to do more, like, radio-style stuff where basically we, uh... I, I read out, like, news, or I talk about, like, specific segments and stuff. Almost more like a podcasty thing. So if there's ever a lull in commentary or whatever, we can just move into one of those. One of those regular segments. I think that'd be pretty fun. I don't know. You guys, you guys let me know what you think of that idea. Uh oh! All oh, right, this one, this one's a bit, a bit tricky. Yeah, the thing about 100 CC is it's where you gotta start really paying attention when you decide to drift, because those split seconds can really gum up your works. The drift does slow you down a little bit, and then it makes up for it with a boost. Right, right as you let go. You gotta kind of work that out. Oh, crap. It's alright, it's alright. Wait, ooh. Oh, we're still in the first lap. We're still in the first lap, it's all good. Oh, come on, dude. Dude! Ah, oh, it's chaos! Hit me one or two times. I'm all right. Hit me like 15 times. Good gracious. It's a little much. Come on. Come on, man. Let me go. Let me go. Okay, there we go. See, this is the thing is I don't get upset with Mario Kart in the same way that I do with like a Jack X. With Jack X, it just feels like I'm fighting the controls, and that puts me in a really bad mood. Because it doesn't... It doesn't feel like I'm playing the game. It makes me feel like I'm incompetent. Like I'm missing something obvious. Because it's like, it's... Literally the controls. It's the game. So I, I should be able to get it, shouldn't I? And, uh, yeah, that is generally the case, but... <sighs> oh, well. I also need to get better at the, uh... The um, slipstream. That seems like it'd be really useful on a lot of these tracks. Uh oh, uh oh. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. But uh, it's tricky, man. You gotta get pretty close, and if they have a banana, you're like actually wrecked. Come on, come on. No, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, it was after he got over the line. Man, ah, oh, that's the worst. 
is when you get the first couple, or even the first three, if you don't get the first on the last one, that's the worst feeling. <sighs> Gonna get some water. Um, excuse me. Uh, it's gotten real cold lately, so I'm real dried out. Ugh. Okay. Let's do it again. I think I've gotten as far as the Mute City and then not quite gotten the first on that one, so... Here's hoping. Alright. Oh yeah, a lot of big alternating drifts on this one. Because Yashi is just a big round boy. Since it's shaped like a Yashi. Makes sense, makes sense. Got King Boo taking up the lead this time. Okay. Okay. It's always interesting to me um, on different races, or even if not specific like races, like sometimes even the full cup. Um different characters will kind of crop up as like the rival you know where they're just like specifically giving you a lot of trouble and usually getting just slightly ahead of you it's an interesting little emergent thing so yeah they're slipstreaming pretty well and I get it sometimes but I don't know about keeping it keeping it up Consistently. Whoop. All right, here's where the drift can get a little dicey. Okay, okay. Kind of just go straight across here. Uh, the blooper seems like it'd be more trouble if you had more people in the way, but like most of the time, it doesn't really seem to matter that much. Like if you know the track well enough. You rarely have that as an issue, you know? Gonna line it all up. Oof. It's alright, it's alright, we're pretty far ahead. I do love the changes, changes into this tiny little, um, like RC car sound. Whenever you get shrunk it's a very cute little detail. That's the kind of polish... Nah. That's the kind of polish you expect from Nintendo, you know? Uh-oh. Here we go. Ooh, keep going. Keep going. Come on. Back up to speed. Back up to speed. Ah, I missed him. I missed him. Ah, right behind him. Come on, man. Okay, okay, okay. Let's give that one another shot from the top. But, uh, in terms of marathon, I will be doing a marathon next month, and I'm gonna set it up to do a charity marathon, which I've been talking about for a while. Um, it's going to be a Banjo-Kazooie marathon, which I'm, you know, I'm going to 100% it in a single stream. We're going to uh, be benefiting... I said Extra Life before, but I think my move this time is going to be uh, Wigs for Kids, because I've been meaning to for a long time. I, I have very long, luxurious hair, and I'm like, it's, it's a pain to deal with, so I'm like, well... I don't want to just throw it away because I've been growing it for years, so I was like, let's let's donate it. Um, and then when I was looking at the website, they're like, actually, like the hair donations are good, but there's still like 70% of operations costs that need to be just cash donations. I was like, well, okay, I'll do a charity marathon 
for that, benefiting them. Um, I'll probably do like a, you know, 10 bucks for every hour it takes me. Uh, that'll be my donation. And also my donation will be at the end of it all, I will uh, cut off my hair to send in for a donation. And I've measured, it's long enough, I've read all the specific rules. So I'll basically, I'll wash my hair before, and then throughout the marathon it will be drying. So that by the end of the marathon it will be dry and ready to go. I have to buy a bunch of rubber bands. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a project, but I will stream it all. It'll be the finale to a big old charity stream. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we're able to raise a decent amount of money. The wigs for kids. But uh, I want to contact them. I want to email them and be like, do you guys have any specific copy you want me to read? Do you want me to uh, use any specific graphics? <laughs> Anything like that. I feel like, you know, uh, the idea of a charity stream isn't that outlandish, but for that particular charity, I don't know um, how how much they would have done it. So let's let's find out. So I'll be spending the next month doing that, setting up the new stream, working on some YouTube videos, and uh, of course. Finding some more voiceover clients, submitting to more agencies, the hustle. You know, you know how it is. And of course, I still gotta learn piano. I wanna do some music. My hope is to do, um, you know, a song a month, but depending on the rest of my workload, it could be tough. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. I have a, a lot of ideas, a lot of plans, but it's uh, it's it's always tricky finding time and energy. Energy is the big thing. I get I get tired, and I mean, there's there's ways around that. I've been doing a GG Sups, which is basically like Game Fuel, but it's um, I don't know. There's probably differences. The thing that concerns me with GG Sups is just that uh. I emailed them asking how much caffeine exactly is in the serving, and they just ghosted me. Never responded. I don't, th I, I don't know why that would be necessarily, but yeah. I'd like to know. Because I, I don't... I, I, I'm not like super strict with my caffeine consumption, but it's good to at least keep track of how much caffeine you're consuming. It is, after all, a, a stimulant. And it can be. You can you can go pretty overboard with them if you're not careful. Wendy O, Wendy O, don't do it. Ah, Luigi. No. Do, do, do. Pop out of my way, buddy. Come on now, do another trick. There we go. Hang on to this banana for insurance. way to switch out the items. I'd love to use the mushroom, but as far as I can tell, you can't use it until you use the banana. I don't know. I've not done any tutorials or anything. This is Mario Kart. You just, you just do the driving. Whoa. Come on. Come on. We're getting close to it. This is a pretty short track. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, no! Ludwig! Ah, frick. Zipped right by me at the end. What? Why did the... <laughs> Why did that one get me? I was second. I was definitely second. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Come on. Ooh. It's unlocked, eh? What do we got? Mr. Scooty. How fast is that? Mm, yeah, we're still going with the P-Wing. I mean, hmm. Should I go for something? A little more... A little more even. Let's try it out. Let's try well, some even stats. See how I feel about them. Feels so tall now. He already has like that big old crop of crop of grass on top. Her hair. And now I'm also elevated by the bike. Whoa, okay. Okay, I like this. Feels a little tighter. I feel like I have a much um I don't know if my hitbox is different, but it kind of feels like it. You know? It might just be a, a trick of the graphics, but I, I definitely have, like, a slimmer profile graphically. Come on now, come on now. There we go, there we go. A snap. Ooh. Whoa. Uh Woo, okay. That was close. Oh, well, that's all right. That's not as bad as the blue shell. Also, the noise of the motorcycle is a lot more powerful. Of a run, run, rather than a. You know what I'm saying? Whoops! Mutually assured destruction on that guy. That's quite all right. Squid, okay. Inkling. Okay. Interesting rival. Ludwig. I feel like Ludwig is almost always some kind of rival, right? He's always a pretty aggressive driver. Watch out for that banana. I feel like he's gonna give me. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, see, he made a move for it. Ah, right behind him. Right behind him. It's okay. It's quite all right. Whoops, I meant to hit quit. Oh, well. Um. Do I have a... Let's see, we have that one. This, let me... Hmm. Is there the option? Well, I want to be able to hit an ad from here. No, not there. Oh well. Alright, we're uh, resetting this anyways. All right. Yeah, that was okay, but it's not really my jam. So, we're going to switch back.
Kabam. I also need to start hitting the gym again. I, I went without when I was on vacation up in Seattle, and then coming back, I was like, well, so many people are probably resolving, like, I'm gonna join the gym for January, so I figured I'd wait out that rush because my gym already gets pretty crowded. It's not a very big one. They opened another gym in town, but I'm already locked into like a two-year membership, so. Plus, it's just a more convenient location, so. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I could always try it. There's another branch of my gym. Uh, in the next town over, if I next town over, it's one of those situations where the towns, like, basically meet in the middle. So while it's technically like, oh, this town just ended and this one began, it's like, hmm, they're basically the same, same situation. So, uh, yeah, I could try that one sometime, but I gotta drive to it, whereas the, my usual gym, I can walk to. And it's not too bad right now, because it's not, like, super hot out, but... If I wanna. Not usually. But I should. I'm feeling pretty out of shape. I haven't really done much exercise in like a month, and my job is pretty inactive. I was walking to the gym, like, that's just more exercise, you know? It's a little unfortunate walking back, because then it's like I'm all worn out. But you know what? That's just part of life. Being tired, being sweaty. Uh, everybody's been there. Whoop. Well, I guess I should say everybody's been tired. I don't know. There's probably some people who don't sweat. Sounds like it'd be dangerous, you know? I think uh, Dan Abadan from Game Grumps talked about how he doesn't have suit his sweat glands are super inactive so it means that basically he won't sweat very much and that's bad because sweat cools you down when you are too hot so if you're not sweating you're probably just overheating <coughs> and that sounds not so good ah stay hydrated kids Good for you. Ba bam, let's go. I love the crowd sounds for this one. Very exciting. Uh-oh, up oh, in the grass. You have a slot in that coin immediately. What other game I really want to play um, is Inscription. Because I already love... Uh, like, that's just my jam, dude. It's like a spooky... A spooky roguelike deck builder. Dude. BDG put it really well. He's like, there's so many of these games where they're like, they have this idea of like being a spooky creepypasta, but then they forget to, you know, also be a fun game. Uh, Pony Island had that problem. It's like, oh, it's spooky, but it's actually ponies. But then like, the game itself is just boring. Like all of this exploratory adventure -y kind of parts of it, it's like, okay, that's fun, but yeah. The actual, like, um, the actual gameplay of, like, just kind of platforming and stuff is, like, pretty dull. You know? Uh, you could make an argument either way for Doki Doki Literature Club. It's, like, that one, it's a decent, like, visual novel. And, like, there are plenty of visual novels much more boring than that one. But uh, it is certainly, as with most visual novels, it's pretty low interactivity. You know, not a ton of huge player choices. I, I mean, okay, the player choices you do make are pretty 
pretty uh, important, but there's just, you know, not a ton of them. Dang it. Ah, uh, Ludwig, Ludwig. Oh, at least I came, in. nope, nope, didn't come in second. Came in fifth. Oh, make it sixth, right at the end. Ah, oh, villager, villager. All right, all right. Starting from the top, once again. Here we go, egg cup, egg cup. Yeah, this is the main difference between like Jack X and this, is like Jack X, like this, I still get screwed over, but when I do, like when I do, I don't know, it feels more fair. You know, because I could do the same to anybody else, and it's only a, like, minor setback. You know, you're just, like, knocked down for a second, and then you're immediately back in it. And it kind of, like, you know, comes down to acceleration and stuff. But, like, Jack X, all of their animations, the, all of their wipeout animations are, like, super inconsistent, so it's hard to tell how much you even do. Um... That health system is so annoying. You know, and yeah, all the combat is like so much of it feels like the green shell, and like the green shell is obviously, as far as the offensive weapons, like the worst. Like, I don't think anyone would disagree with me there. Like, it's the worst one, it's really hard to aim, it's just kind of a crapshoot. Like, you can probably get really great and just snipe people with it, but like. For most people, it's just not much of an option. And then that's most of the ones in Jack X. It's like the missiles are the red shell, but everything else is like, just can't really aim it that well. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No, 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 no. And of course, the controls in Jack X are just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. You get stuck on walls constantly. Like, I I just, yeah. I'll finish that game because I'm, like, more than halfway through at this point, but... Oof. It's just, it's... It could learn a lot from Mario Kart. As, as a racing game. Ah, I did it too early. Did it too early. Oh boy, Luigi's around my tail. Oh, oh, Ludwig. Where did you come from? It's all right. Let's get over here, and then we can zoom. Yeah. Oh, and I got lightninged right at the end, right after going over. That could have been bad, but I had precise timing. Ah, okay. Oh. Ba bam Here we go. Oh, okay, later. Come on now, come on now. Oh yeah, here we go. Alright, and then... Uh, getting the drifts right feels like the key to this map. Right? Oh, can't see, can't see. Cause like there's two very distinct areas where you can drift. 
across these like big old big old turns. So like doing it at just the right time. And optimizing that feels like the, the main strat. Uh, uh, uh. I'm watching out for these mud puddles too. Oh no! It's all right. It's all right. It's only lap two. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Oh what? Okay. I thought that would be helpful. Guess I was wrong. Wario. Wario. Is he the one who landed everybody? Cause he was still large. Of course, pulling off these tricks is always a good, good strat too. Ah, I got flamed. Can I make it? Can I make it back up? Oh, it's like the end of Speed Racer. I'm on a mission. so close oh my goodness I got it hold on I gotta grab my phone so I can stream marker that that was crazy that was lunacy that was as we say in the industry a bonkers <coughs> hold on I'm opening the twitch app got a stream manager there we go let's add Stream marker added. Yeah, that was a wild finish. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I need some more water though. Well, I'm tied for first. So that's, that's, I mean, I still gotta go from the start, right? You have to get a perfect score for those three stars, baby. Hmm. Hold on a second. Hold on a sec. Okay, 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 we're good to go, we're good to go. Sorry, got distracted by a thing on my phone. All right, let's do it. Yeah, this Yoshi track starting off is a pretty volatile one to have as the first one in the circuit. Bam, let's go. Um, also, did it say this is a GBA one? I haven't played Super Circuit in so long. But that is like the best Mario Kart, dude. It's so fun. I don't know, something about the, the graphic. It feels like the original SNES one, but with like a bunch of updates. Because that was the big thing, is that the GBA... Uh, the handhelds are always, like, a couple generations behind, basically, so, like, um, like, ah, uh-oh, went overboard. Um, so, yeah, uh, the GBA was around during the GameCube, and it could do about the SNES, um, the DS could do, like, N64, and it came out around the Wii, the 3DS could probably have done GameCube, but they ended up just doing, like, snazzier N64. And now the Switch is, like, it, it's, like, the com combination. Like, y'all remember the three pillars? When they announced the, the DS, they said that they were going to have three pillars of Nintendo. Home console, 
uh, Game Boy and DS, right? So they were going to have two types of handhelds. And so they put out the, the original DS, the Wii, and the Game Boy Micro. You guys remember the Game Boy Advance Micro? It was like a super tiny thing. Uh, looked almost like a little like soap bar style phone. And it was like, you loaded in the, the stuff on the bottom, it had a great screen, super tiny form factor, so it was like crazy portable. Super cool, you could like change out the face plates, but uh, yeah, nobody really bought it, especially because the DS, which had a much bigger screen, and it had the clamshell so it kept the screen nicer, and it played DS games, well it, it played Game Boy Advance games. It had backwards compatibility. So everybody was like, why would we get the tiny Game Boy Micro? They tried to treat it as like a, a style thing, you know? Kind of like with the DSi where they were like, it has a camera. So you can just like, it's like more social, you know? But yeah, no, DS went out and so they just kind of quietly got rid of that. And then now with the Switch, they've just kind of quietly gotten rid of 3DS. Like 3DS is still technically there, but they haven't, really talked about it in a while so it's kind of it's kind of done for and getting a 3ds is actually pretty difficult i always i only ever had the original 3ds i always wanted an xl or like a new xl but uh now they're like kind of rare so yeah switch switch is kind of it they collapse the three pillars down into two and then eventually into just one which I'm okay with. I always preferred handheld, so having a handheld that is as strong as a console and can be played on a TV and, like, streamed like this. Like, I can't really stream 3DS. I could maybe stream DS with, like, some emulation, but that, you know, that's always pretty difficult. It's, it's pretty wonky. Um, but, I don't know. Maybe, maybe someday. I'd love to play something like Hotel Dusk. Whoa! Which is just like a super straightforward, like, uh, neo-noir 70s detective story. But it's pretty sweet. Really good story, real, like, subtle characters, which I love. You know, it's not, like, super corny like Phoenix Wright. Not that I don't like Ace Attorney. I, it's, I enjoy it. Um, but it's super corny. And in a way, that's kind of the appeal. I get it, but... Man, I don't know. Sometimes you want you want something a little more mature, a little more serious. All right, don't touch the shell this time. I don't know. I just figured, like, the mushrooms, like, you could just use them. But I guess... I guess not. Come on, do a, do a trick. Whoa, uh-oh. Oh, dang, that might be it. I don't know if I can come back. Oh, it's gonna be tight. Fourth? Third? Okay, we're coming back to it. Maybe, I might be able to manage this. Oh. I wanna hang on to the box in case I do get back up to the top. Oh, uh, no, that's it, that's it. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to bus by without a uh, mushroom. Well, I had got a couple of hits in there. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, that Excite Bike track, really, it, it's so short, but it like really throws a wrench in things. Okay. Whoop. I keep putting my arm over my mic cable and it feels ugh, it feels bad. It's that kind of coiled up like old phone style cable, which is great for cable management because it means that I can have a super long cable that stretches across my room, but when I'm not using it, it coils up into like just a nice little three foot cable. I keep looking over and gesturing where the camera is, but I'm not using the camera today. Yeah, it won't be the end of the camera forever. I definitely want to use it again. It's just a uh, GameCube. Okay, GameCube, right. 
Yeah, I didn't remember this track, so that, that makes sense. Yeah, once I get once I get that PC, I'll I'll will have a new overlay and background and probably some animated stuff going on, which will be fun. But that's that's for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I always run straight to first when in reality a close second is probably the better strategy, right? Because like you want to be basically oh, crap. Oh, that was a bad idea. You want to be close enough that uh, you don't want to be so close that you get hit by the blue shell shockwave, but you do want to be close enough that you can um, overtake them once they get hit by the blue shell or if you get a red shell. So if you can hold that sweet spot second right till the end and then knock them out or something so there's no time for the blue shell to hit you, that seems like the way to go. I don't know. I don't I have to, That feels like a little too precise. I'm a little chaotic in my strategies, you know? I'm a wild card. I remembered, oh, another one I'd want to play, uh, SSX3 for the GameCube, which is a snowboarding game. Um, which might be tricky because, like, it does have licensed music. Like, it's got, uh, I remember it had U2's Vertigo on it which is a pretty sick track, but also... Uh-oh. No, I panicked. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would get by. But, uh, yeah, there was, like, interesting characters in that. There's, like, one who's, like, a kid prodigy snowboarder who's always talking crap, and there's, like, this one dude who's, like, basically, like, a Steve-O stunt dude who's just, like, yeah, thrill-seeker. Um, and he's like, his hair's all crazy, and he's just like, woo! I, I grinded my snowboard on a dang power line. Yeah, see there, that's what you want to happen. You want to be able to zip in right after him. Well, I'm gonna marker that for uh, an example. Do need to catch up on my highlights. I haven't been streaming very much this month. I'm glad to be coming back to it. It's just I was so busy with that audiobook, and then last week I was just so out of it because my neck was just totally wrecked. Neck and shoulders. I was in so much pain. And like, even now, I'm still getting some twinges and stuff. So I'm, I'm like 90% there, but it's still not great. Ugh, getting old. Getting old. I'm going to be turning 30 in like a month a little over a month yeah because my birthday's march 3rd it's pretty wild i'm gonna be heading back to seattle for that seeing some Cirque du Soleil. should be fun um and yeah i'll probably be working a bit more i'll bring my stuff but I, i'm just gonna be my hope is that by then I'll have transitioned out of doing stuff for Voice Bunny. Because, like, they're the main reason, you know. And I just hit the same problem I had with Fiber. Which is, like, Fiber was really good for a while because of volume. But each individual project was paying so poorly. And they were expecting so much of me that it just was so much stress for not nearly enough money. So I just have to... Yeah, I just have to, like, slowly s start an exit strategy, man. It was good while it lasted. The last few months, man, it was it was fantastic. But, uh, unfortunately, it just couldn't last forever. Which is, you know, that's just the case of any platform. I'm thinking of going back to Casting Call Club. I never had great success on that, but, like, I haven't done any of those in, like, years. And, like, now my rates with, like, professional auditions have gotten really good. So I feel like maybe it's the time to dip back in. 
My problem with it is just always that those auditions are so much work. Like, even just auditioning for one project, it, you have to spend, like, a half hour just recording, uh, organizing and all of that, and, like, just sitting down, reading the script, understanding the character. It can be frustrating, especially considering, like, so often nothing comes of it. Or, like, any time... Most of the ones where I've, like, been able to get the role... It doesn't happen. Like, they just... Th th pretty much... There have been, like, a handful of projects that have been finished. But the majority of projects, and pretty much every project I was ever involved in through Casting Call Club, just fell apart and was never finished. You can't get paid if it's not finished, really. So it's just... Yeah, it's just... Frustrating. It's, like... It's a lot of people who see the option to have voice actors and they're just like, oh, now I have so many ideas in mind. And then they like, they cast it before they're actually ready. You know, they like, they set up the casting call. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna need this actor and this actor and this actor. And then you get on the project and it's like, all right, where's the script? And like, we haven't written it yet. And it's like, oh, okay, this isn't happening then. And that's pretty much the quickest way to tell if a project's actually gonna happen. Do they have a script? when they start casting. Like, genuinely, if you want to do a project like that, and even if you end up starting it out like that and, act, and like, getting ahead of yourself, like, I don't blame you. I've been in that situation, too, when I was younger. I, uh, I would get really excited about an idea and then immediately start, like, getting ahead of myself and doing the steps that weren't necessary yet, like casting. And then when I, I hit a hard spot in the script, I just give up. You have to have perseverance and follow through. And really, the, the thing I've always said is, like, if you want to do a project like that, awesome. But do as much work as you can before you bring anyone else on. Like, the script, the script you can do by yourself. So you should absolutely have a script before you even think about bringing someone on. You can talk about it. You can tell people you're excited about it. But until you have a script, you should not be thinking about casting at all. Um, and then, you know, if you if you can storyboard, great. Just like if you can do any any aspect of it, you should. There's so much, especially now, like with all of the resources we have um, in technology, like you can get most of it done by yourself. But like. That's the thing, is like you gotta, you can't just assume you're gonna, because it's really easy. Yeah, get hecked, Toad. It's really easy to just get too excited about the possibility of the idea, get a cast, then you're like, all right, I got the cast, it's basically already done. It's like, no, so much of the work still needs to be done. Um, yeah, so just get it worked out. Even, I did one that was just like, Ah, just barely in second. I did one where it was like a, it was going to be a dub of Undertale. And that seems super easy. You just play through the game and you just transcribe everything that they say. Like you just write down all of the dialogue and write down who's who. But they just, they never ended up doing it and just fell apart. Or like, um... I was part, like, a long time ago, almost a decade ago, when I was still really new, I got cast as N in Pokemon Black and White the Musical, which was gonna be great. And they wrote a script, and I recorded my lines for the script, and it went great. And then, they never wrote the songs, and all just fell apart. And they just ghosted me. They just stopped talking. So that's that's been my experience with a lot of fan projects. Like, I love the, I love the enthusiasm, but... There just needs to be more, you know, more discipline to make sure that you actually get it done. But that's enough of that for the moment. I'm going to go take a quick break. Y'all should, too. Go hydrate. But whatever you do, don't touch that internet dial. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to be our back with more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in just a minute. Okay, okay. See you soon.
Ah, hey, I'm back. Hold on. Get put it on. I got these, these fuzzy cat socks. Ah, they're getting all torn up in the heel, but uh, it's pretty cold here. I mean, okay, it's only like 60 degrees, and my room always stays warmer uh, because of the way the house is insulated and the fact that it's the most uh, south-facing, so it gets hit by the sun the most. But it's very humid, which means that... Um, it's very humid, which means that my, uh, the, the air full of water, the water itself gets cold, so it always kind of feels like you got a little bit of frost on you. I just noticed, Nintendo Labo, oh, that's fun. I always wanted to get Labo, but it's always just a little too expensive for what it is, but that's whatever. I'll just watch other people play with it and be like, yeah. The cool thing to me is that you can basically make your own stuff once you understand how it works, because most of it is just like the, um, the, like in the infrared sensor using just like reflections and stuff. So you could like just make your own stuff with reflective tape and cardboard to do a lot of that same stuff and program whatever. So that's pretty sweet. I'm curious if there's any, that'd make a great YouTube channel, just going through and making your own Labo stuff from scratch. Cause I see people doing like, you know, playing with the piano or like building the, the set itself, but it's like, yeah, seeing more custom stuff would be super interesting. In fact, you could make like super cool Labo stuff just out like wood or whatever. Because all of the functions are like, each singular function is pretty like, um, is pretty like simple. It's just the combinations that can become complex. So, dang it, I made the same mistake. Sometimes I I see the uh, the red in the corner of my vision, and I'm like, I have a red shell, but in fact, I have a mushroom. The mushrooms are not as useful. But uh. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. I, I could probably buy the cheapest Labo set and do something. I need to not give myself more projects, man. I already have so much to do. I have an idea for, like, uh... What? Ah, oh, because I was in first when they threw it. Okay. Yeah, I have, like, ideas for, like, animations, reviews. I'm working on a Root the Board Game review. Well, not so much a review as, like, an autopsy. You can check. I have, um... I have a Fallout, the board game review like that, from a while back, which I'm not super happy with, but I still, th I think I had good ideas, I just don't think um, my presentation was great. I, I got kind of lazy towards the end and didn't get enough B-roll, and my, my voiceovers, I think, a little too relaxed, so a lot of stuff like that, but yeah, this will just be... A continuation of that series, but it's going to be about Roots and my, my issues with that, which I don't want to go into too much because they'll be in the video. Stuff is to say, like, I love Root so much. It's one of my favorite games, and for a while it was my favorite game. Uh, but there are some problems, which they, they do kind of get into in most of the reviews, you know, most of the better reviews of it. I think it's just a problem Cole Worley himself has. He just kind of has trouble with, like, endings. The meat of the game, the actual play, is always super solid with him, but then it, it the endings are always kind of like... I don't know. They're just kind of a wet fart, basically. It just... There it is. Oh, no! I forgot to change out of... Ah! I forgot to change out of that. I mean, it's not, like, the biggest deal. Since, you know, you could still see the game. But I, I just went a whole race with that still on. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, my bad, my bad. You know what? Okay. Yeah, the Excite Bike, it's not always the same, is it? Because that little jump in the front, thats that wasn't there last time. Which makes sense, because Excite Bike it had, like, the custom tracks you can make. It was, like, one of 
are actually, it might have been the first racing game that did that. Like, I don't know what could have really preceded it in that way. Um, since it was one of the earlier console, like, racing games to begin with. Aside from my own pole position. There was one, there was one on Genesis where it was like a, a motorcycle racing game. And it was like, you could like upgrade your stuff, but it was super complex. Basically, when I was a kid, we had a Genesis and it had the super six pack. It was six games on one pack. I don't know if it was legit or if it was like some bootleg stuff. But it had, you know, it had uh, original Sonic. The original X-Men game, which I loved because like half of the people you could play as were my two favorite X-Men. Nightcrawler and Gambit. You could play as both of them and it was sick. Um, and Wolverine was always awesome. And I like Cyclops is fine. <laughs> it's, 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 he's okay. He's definitely one of those ones where it's like he probably was cooler back in the 60s when they first came up with the idea, but by modern standards, he's just such a goody two-shoes that you're like, okay, Scott. Also, something I only realized recently, because I was reading, like, YouTube comments, uh, Cyclops in those original, like, Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKenna, like, those X-Men movies, that was James Marston. I watched those all the time as a kid, and I somehow never got that until now. But, well, I didn't even really know that much about James Marsden until more recently, but it's like we've been watching Hairspray, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, which I love that movie, and I'm super excited for the sequel. It's silly, but it's like, it feels like, you know, Space Jam or something, where it's just like a pretty corny kids movie, but it's, it's very digestible. Super excited for Knuckles and Tails in the new one. The redesign of Robotnik. Oh, it's all going to be great. And it's... I'm Okay. I don't want to qualify it. I'm going to love it. Okay? That's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm going to like it a lot, but I'm not saying it's going to be necessarily a good movie. Oh, it's not... It's not Synecdoche, New York, and it's all about, you know, your, your existential process of an artist. Which I love Synecdoche in New York. It is, like, a top three favorites for sure. But it's also, like, sometimes I just want a movie that's just about having a good time and want seeing Sonic floss and it be a goof, you know? Yeah, I know, it's dumb. But I don't care. Sometimes I just like watching dumb movie. I don't know, I've watched Elmo and Grouchland recently. That movie slaps. People are just being haters about like, oh, it's not a good movie unless it's, it says something about the human condition and it has amazing cinematography and huge sets. It's like, yeah, those movies are great, but also like, come on, you're not having any fun at the dumb movie. Not even a little fun. Okay. It just, it smacks of, like, incel behavior to me, where it's like, no woman would ever get with me. Meanwhile, there's, like, thousands of women who are just like, yeah, I'd probably date you back, you know, before you were such a jerk and so focused on it. But it's like, they're not the super hot supermodel that guy wants, and it's like, hey, bud, just, like, quit, like over idolizing people and expecting this ridiculous standard if you like grow to appreciate what actual people look like and like learn to not be a jerk then there are plenty of people you would be super happy with same thing <laughs> excuse me like your standards don't have to be that high. You can just enjoy dumb movies. You can enjoy like a friggin' Sha Shaquille O'Neal film, or like a, I don't know, some s goofy Arnold Schwarzenegger film. Like, not everything has to be, have incredible artistic merit to be fun. 
Man, I'm dropped in fifth again. It's this one that's giving me trouble. I can keep first for most of it, but then, like, right at the end, somebody always skirts ahead. All right, let's give it another shot. Rants aside, it's like, enjoy movies for whatever reason you want to, and don't enjoy stuff for whatever reason you want to. Like, most of the time it's valid, unless you're being, like, racist or something, but... Like... I don't know. I, I feel like I've I've been a lot happier ever since I got over myself and stopped being such a tryhard about film. You know, recognize that... Uh... There's so much to art that doesn't involve, like, necessarily highbrow, lofty thinking. Ah, I forgot my own strategy. What's wrong with me? I'm a fool. Je suis bubu le fou. nice way to spend a Saturday. Especially, you know, I had another busy week. I mean, it wasn't nearly as busy as the week I was working on that audiobook. That it was a huge rush because the other, the other narrator who had been working on it, um, you know, they it, it was already, I was brought on, I was like the second person they brought on for pickups. So it's like one person narrated it and then someone else and then uh, when they needed changes, they weren't available, so they brought on a different guy, and that guy ended up having like a kid, so like he didn't, like like he his uh, partner or whatever. I mean, there was a birth, basically, so couldn't do it anymore. So then they brought me on, and I had to record two full chapters for them, plus pickups. I should have saved on to that. Held on to that. Saved that? Saved that or held on to that. I combined them. Whatever. Um, so I came on and did those for them, and they were pretty happy with them. They were like, you know what? We'll go with you instead. So I had to redo the whole book. I mean, my parts. It was one of those ones where it, like, switches perspective. Um, from, like, the male characters to the female characters and all that. So I only had to record, like, a third of the book. But that was still like five and a half hours of voiceover that they needed as quickly as possible because they were already behind schedule before I came on for those pickups. So that meant that I had to like crank through it in like five days. And they were happy with it. And my, I only had like a couple of pickups. Most of them being that like I guess they decided to cut a chapter. So I had to re-record um, the, ch the like Chapter 79, like the, that chapter heading stuff. Or everything after it to just like lower it by a number. But yeah, got it all done in five days. It was brutal, but it was, I, I'm pretty proud of it. But yeah, I'm still kind of recovering from it, man. It's, it's a lot of work. Even doing an hour of audiobook a day, that's like, that's a pretty tough project, you know? Especially if you're doing it on your own, which you usually are nowadays in voiceover, like, and you send it off, it's like, there's always the possibility they're going to be like, eh, we don't like it. Zoom it back. Just do it all over again. And it's like, well, you're probably going to get paid for doing it again. Beesh. The ideal would be to go into a studio with, like, a director and, or the client, you know, maybe the client can direct or whatever. So that, you know, as you're doing it, they can always stop you and be like, oh, we're not liking that. Or like, do this bit again. And then they do the editing for you and the engineering and... Ah. <sighs> Voiceover used to be so much easier. It used to be you just come in... You just come into the studio. You, you read into the mic. You know, do your, do your performance and just focus on your performance. And then, when it's 
And then if they need anything different, they'll just tell you right there, like, yeah, this bit needs to be done like this. Uh, go back and do that. Like, you just fix it right there. Everybody, and it's all approved and everybody's happy before you leave the studio. And then you just leave and they do all of the editing and stuff. Like, that would be amazing. But no, as it is now, they expect you to handle the recording, the editing, the performance, often the processing as well, and it's like, it's, it's so much work. And they expect you to do it for even cheaper prices, and it's, oh man, it's, it's not what it used to be. It, I really wish I could go back to like, um, I wish I could go back to like the 80s and just like, head out to LA in a van and just like, audition out there or like do stand up for a while and be found or something and just like do it in the traditional studio system man it, it sounds so much better in so many ways and you end up getting union like you can join the union and the union pays like magnitudes like hundreds of times better i just yeah man all this all this non-union work for hire stuff i mean i guess it's still work for hire even in the studio system but all this independent non-union stuff is for birds frankly it's just it's you can't really do the studio system unless you are in the actual geographic location i don't want to move to la because la is super expensive and i don't like the weather and i don't really trust la because it's like it's full of, you know, earthquakes and stuff, and we're gonna, they're gonna have the big one, and I don't want to be there for that. There's constantly droughts and fires. Doesn't seem like a great place to live. What I'd want to do is go to Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, which is where they record a ton of different cartoons for television. Um... just work through their studio system it's less competitive you know I don't think it pays as well as LA but it's also a lot cheaper like it's of the major markets in North America there's basically LA New York Chicago and um, Atlanta has really popped off a bit um, and then Vancouver and like Vancouver is like the least stressful sounding of them. And you'd still get to be in cartoons and stuff. I, I, I just don't want to do it. I'd love to do it, but you know, you got to get citizenship or a visa. And it's like, how do you get that for as a freelance actor? I don't know. It seems like a headache. But it also seems like in the long run would be worth it. Get like dual citizenship? I don't know. There's also like a... Uh, Texas, I think Austin or Houston, I don't remember exactly which, but they have uh, they have uh, a lot of the anime dubs, like Funimation is there, which is like one of the biggest dub houses now. Um, and like Rooster Teeth, which granted, Rooster Teeth usually hires from inside for their voiceover, because they just have a ton of different people who are already like known talents that a lot of their fans love and recognize their brand, so I understand. Uh, it's also, I'm not super impressed with a lot of Rooster Teeth stuff. There's cool stuff. Uh, uh, frankly, I think the big thing with Rooster Teeth is that Monty Ohm was an incredible, incredible talent. And he was kind of the only one among the group. I like Michael Jones. I don't, like, hate the other guys or anything. They're all kind of just a lot of mediocre white dudes for the most part. Like, most of them, they're not, like, exceptionally funny. They, they're, they have a very frat boy attitude, which makes sense considering, you know, they're all based around, like, Halo and Xbox, which is the most fratty of the systems. Um... Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I've, there are a few things they've done that I've been fully, like, super into. 
I've been really into basically the fight choreography that Monty did. And now that he's gone... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I've, I've never really super been into a lot of their comedy. Uh, their animation has never really blown me away. It's always been, like, pretty underwhelming. And, like, I understand... Um, I got like a zit that's really bugging me on my neck. Ooh, hey. Bad wagon. Okay, okay, let's try this out. This is the Iggy Koopa car right here. Um Yeah, it's like it feels like independent internet animations, which they technically are, but it's like Rooster Teeth is big enough now that they can they can do better. Like, I'll, I'll give them credit for Red vs. Blue. They did pretty good with what they had, but, like, now it's, like, there's no reason they couldn't be doing incredible stuff, and they just kind of aren't. And they, I don't know, there's just really no excuse for it. They're doing okay stuff. I liked uh, Laser Team. That was pretty funny. But again, it felt like... It felt like some scrappy little, like, indie straight-to-DVD movie. And even though that is kind of what it is, I, I don't know, I feel like they could have done so much more with it, you know? It looks like a YouTube premium sh uh, movie, which it, I'm pretty sure it was. But, like, yeah, I don't know, cinematography didn't look especially great. Um... The costumes were pretty neat, but yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's my whole thing is I don't really want to be that critical of them because like they still do a lot of work and they like they are very passionate about what they do and I don't want to just because it's something I don't like I still really support their vision of like this fully independent studio um, of like you know people who understand internet and gaming culture in a way that studios never truly do. You know, you uh, Ralph, Ralph, uh, Wreck-It Wreck Ralph, that's the one. And, um, aw, oh, come on, me, aw, oh, dang it. That's the worst when you slip to second but it still comes at you. You know, I don't know, it's... It's just, I, I just, I wish I could enjoy it more, you know? I wish I could enjoy Ruby the way some people enjoy Ruby. I wish, there's just like this attitude to it that uh, something about it feels like very try hard. And I don't want to say cringe because I think cringe is like the death of creativity and like is really just a way to make fun of people for having enthusiasm for stuff you don't think is cool. Um. But, I feel it a little bit. I feel it a little for, uh, for Rooster Teeth. I know, I think the big thing is, like, on the opposite end, Mega64 is a team of, like, five or six guys. There's really only, like, four main dudes, and then they got, like, some other dudes that help out. Um, but, like, and, yeah, their stuff is also pretty scrappy and youtube -y. But the thing is, they don't have huge facilities. They have, like, a warehouse. They have, you know, their know-how, and they have their acting abilities, and that's pretty much it. But it, it like, works so much better, so... So much more often does it hit and is actually funny and like actually nails what they're trying to do. Whereas Rooster Teeth, it always feels like it always feels like they're more. It's more of an attempt, you know. It never quite feels like they're doing their best. It never quite feels like they know what they're doing. Whereas Mega 64. They're figuring stuff as they go, uh, figuring stuff out as they go along, but like they have a very clear artistic vision and a very 
interests, like, all of them have different interests and comedic voices. And again, they, like, understand video games on, like, a level that other people don't. Like, the majority of their stuff is basically, like, what if Jackass was about video games instead of just, like, random stunts and pranks? And, like, that's not, like, a groundbreaking concept. But in execution, like, they do pretty good with it, and, like, they've only gotten better. Plus, like, often they will do just, like, actual sketches with, you know, sort of, like, public prank um, elements where they interact with different people in public. Uh, a top one I will always say is the Stanley Parable one, where they basically just went out with a GoPro on and walked around watching people and, like, narrating what they were doing. Yeah, okay, I zipped right through at the last second. Um, like, as they were there, and then the uh, creators of the Stanley Parable were like, hey, you, uh, do you guys want us to get you in contact with the actual narrator? And so they did. And so the narrator basically just watched what they, they basically just, like, had him basically narrate the things they had been saying in person. And it, like, it's great. It's so accurate to what the game is while still being, like, funny. You know, they're never, like, mean-spirited about it. Um, and it's always, like, they make themselves out as the butt of the joke for the most part. Like, they did, uh, they did a Resident Evil 4 bit where they basically had Rocco, Rocco Boti, uh, like... They basically just had him dress up as the, the, the merchant trader, whatever, the, whatever, the, what are you boy, that guy. They had him dress up as that guy, walk around a Walmart parking lot, and just say the quotes to people. Like, it's, what are you buying? What are you selling? I'll buy at a fine price. And it's just like, the, getting how people react to that. Some weirdo just coming up to them. Like in the video game. That was also the first one where they got arrested. They got arrested for that one because, I mean, he's like creeping around the parking lot bugging people, so somebody was eventually gonna call the cops on him. Um, and it has one of my favorite parts of any of them that I quote all the time, which is he just goes up to some random, random lady who's like get loading up her truck with her groceries from the Walmart. It's just like, what are you buying? She's like, pizza for the kids. He's like, what are you selling? Nothing. <laughs> Something about the timing and the delivery of the nothing is just, ah, uh, it's so innocent. It's so enthusiastic. It's, it's wonderful. It's exactly why I love public stuff like that. Like so often, Nowadays, it's been just mean-spirited and people just being, like, violent or gross or, like, just racist or whatever to try and get a rise out of people. But, like, that's the beauty of it is when you just... You just act like a weirdo in a non-threatening way and just find out how people react to that and just... People will react in interesting, strange ways that you wouldn't expect, and it's super entertaining. Finally, okay. Okay, here we go. Finally going to Mute City. Oh, it's taking me all stream. What is that? About, about an hour and a half. All right. Hopefully I can get this first try and I don't have to go through them all again. Well, let's find out. Bam, let's go. Whoa! Okay, they got a good boost. Ah, oh, yeah, this soundtrack's great, too. F-Zero is a fun one. Um, I think they said F-Zero X is coming to the, uh, the Switch Online expansion pass. I can't remember if that was confirmed. They confirmed a few things. They confirmed, uh, the Kirby. And the Crystal Shards, which is, you know, the best Kirby game. Uh-oh! 
Um, so I'm excited for that one. But it looks like they're only doing like one, one a month at most. And they, they did a bunch of Genesis. I think they did like six new Genesis ones, uh, including Sword of, Sword of Vermilion, which is like one of few RPGs I really like. It has that thing. Um, it's hard to describe because it was something that was like a pretty short-lived trend in video games. But it, it, it was this thing where... It was like a way to kind of make it first person in like uh, NES, right? Where they would basically just show you one at a time the image of what you would see and you're just look, looking down a hallway. And then when you hit the button, it basically just cranks in another like image, maybe a single in-between frame. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't always super effective. The, I think the most famous one to do it was the Friday the 13th game when you're in the cabins. Uh, there was also Fester's Quest, that Adam's Family game that did it. So that that was pretty solid. You know, at least in those segments. Yeah, Sword of Vermilion does that, where when you're not in a town, you know, when you're out in the forest or you're in a dungeon, uh, it's in that, it's in that uh, mode, and it makes it... It, it makes for a pretty interesting RPG. It makes it a little more action-y. I mean, obviously, when you run into dudes, it's also kind of like um, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, right? Where you would, like, run into somebody, and then it would go into a little contained... Oh, please, please, please. Yes! Ah, oh, did it. Oh, man. That was a lot of work. Um, add a stream marker for that. But yeah, if you, uh, it, it basically, like, puts you into a little action RPG, and let's, yeah, let's review the results. Uh, a little action RPG kind of segment, you know, so you would actually be walking around, whacking with your sword and stuff. And it was difficult because, like, they could, like, once they get close enough to hit you, they can hit you, like, multiple times. There's no invincibility frame, so you can just, like, shred it within an instant. And it's like really brutal, but it's super fun. Yes, first, 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 first. Congrats. I did it. Real proud of that. Okay, let's get cracking on the next cup, I think. I'm not gonna go for too much longer, but I wanna at least get a feel for the next cup, you know? So we'll just, uh, we'll run it casual. We'll do a casual run of the next cup. The Crossing Cup, ooh, this has Baby Park and Cheese Land. So I can get a feel for it. Um, maybe a couple. You can usually do a run of these cups, like, real quick. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, Baby Park. This one is total madness. It's like, they basically have a ton of laps. The whole thing is so short that you lap each other, like, immediately. Um, you're constantly in hover mode, which means you can just wonk into each other like nobody's business. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna be... Thankfully, because it's so short... And because it's the first one, like, if this was one in the middle, this would be a nightmare, but, um, having it as the first one, this is a good warm-up, you know? God, it's really hard to tell. I'm, I'm very glad it tells me what my positioning is, because I would not be able to tell from the map. Everybody's already laughed each other, like, twice. Similarly, this blue shell is probably going to take out like three other people. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cramped, but it's such a fun idea. Oof. Uh oh, here comes Bullet Bill. Yeah, and then it's also, if you're not in first, it's like the people ahead of you could be like two laps ahead.
I don't think I'm gonna first it on this one. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, okay, okay. Let me just hang on to it. Ooh, I'm very close. Hey, okay. Not too bad. Oh, Tanuki Mario, okay. Yeah, it's also interesting which drivers end up getting picked, because I'm pretty sure it's all just randomized. Yeah, Cheese Land, this is one of those GBA tracks. Although I'm pretty sure it wasn't... They definitely, like, adjusted it. Yeah, you couldn't really do these huge curves like this on the GBA, and they didn't really have as much texture because it was kind of like um, original Mario Kart on the SNES. You know, it was a lot of flat stuff. It was fun. It was definitely very good, but it was it was uh, certainly a throwback. That Shane Chomp. That Shane Chomp is gonna be a big wild fact. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. The Chain Chomp is going to be a huge wild factor in this. Like, that's going to be some serious RNG going into the actual attempts on this. It's like, it, it moves slow enough that it's not going to hit you every time, but if you are in the unlucky situation where you come up on it right as it's going, Dunzo, man. Okay. Yeah, this one's pretty fun. It's got that little jump, which I, I love me a jump. It makes me think of, uh, there was that Wario track in the, in uh, Mario Kart 64, which uh, 64 I also want to go through at some point, especially not, see what I mean? It's, it's when he lets go that's really the problem. When he, like, jumps, you can maybe dodge it, but, like, when he falls, he'll crush you up. Whoop. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, now that's on the expansion pass, which it, it was one of the launch ones for that. That was my Mario Kart, man. That's the one I grew up with. 64. Cause like, I never really had a Super Nintendo. I played it at friends' places every now and then, but N64 was the first real console I had. Same with Game Boy. Game Boy was like the only real one I had as like a kid for a long time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, you know what game I really want to play sometime too is the, um, uh, Mario and Donkey Kong series, which is based on uh, Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. The Game Boy, the original Game Boy. He had a version of Donkey Kong. It, like, the first world of it was the Donkey Kong arcade game, right? Which is, you know, a classic, famous game. Um, oh, man. That's all right. We're going casual. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, after that... There's like seven more worlds, and it just gets more complex in the puzzle platforming, and it's like great. The the like second to last one is so hard, like it's fun, but it's like ridiculous. Cause like basically, sorry, I want to make sure I hit this as best I can. That's gonna do great. Um, basically, uh, most of the game revolved around finding the key or the door right um the the door that would let you out and usually they were like one screen maybe like a couple of screens with scroll between them but it was like it was like pretty contained and you know there were like bonuses you could get where it was like oh peach's umbrella peach's purse and if you get those you get extra points not necessary all the time but it can you know it's it's a good little challenge but generally you are getting the key to open the door and the thing was if you were holding the key you couldn't go up or down ladders which you had to do very often um, and if you ever like bounced on a spring uh, you drop the key so the thing is you could throw and drop the key but once you did a timer started and the timer would be unique to the level usually it was around 10 seconds 
but once the timer went off, it would just respawn back where you originally got it. So the second to last level in the entire game is basically just like a big, it's a single screen with a big looping like obstacle course basically. And the key, I believe, had like 90 seconds on it, or like 99 seconds. Basically like the max the timer could be. So you had a lot of time, but um, the thing was you basically had to throw it onto a conveyor belt that moved very slowly. So you had to watch it as it fades and you had to run over and grab it because at the other end, it would fade away. And by the time you got to the other end, you had like no time left. So you had to immediately grab it. I can't tell you how many attempts it took me to finally do that. It was so, so hard, but it was so fun. Um, so yeah, there was that game, and then they made, for like the DS, uh, Mario and Donkey Kong, which the first one is just a remake of that game uh, with like kind of 2.5D graphics, you know, like 3D models that are just side-scrolling. And then they made also the versions with the mini Marios, where like they were, were kind of lemming style and you had to like get them across, but like try, try and save as many as you could. Um, I never played a ton of those, but they, they scratched that itch for that puzzle platforming, man. You gotta have a lot of patience for those games because they do take a lot of thought and time, even if you have to go quickly and there's a lot of timing puzzles. Um, ooh, winter, winter style, hey. Okay, I don't think I've done it. Oh, and I saw Blathers over there, ah! Look at all the kids. Oh man, we don't have any of the, uh, we don't have any of the New Horizons kids though. These were all New Leaf. I should get back to Animal Crossing. It's just hard if you don't have like a specific like project in mind. It's similar to Minecraft, right? Minecraft is really fun if you have like a project you're doing. But if you're not, and you're just, like, exploring, it's like, well, what do I do, you know? There's only so much to explore out in this world. And, like, I built a base and everything. It's like, okay, now I guess I mine? And then once you get, you know, different stuff, it's like, well, what? Okay. I guess I can do the achievements? I don't know. I just don't have a mind for goals like that, you know? Hey! What the heck? Windy o Um, it's kind of the same reason I, I fell off of Mario Maker, is I was enjoying it, but, you know, I, I, I enjoy the big picture and I enjoy the planning, but once you get down to, like, the actual kind of nitty-gritty of, like, throwing everything together and, like, doing, putting each block down, even with, like, the tools for, like, copy and paste and stuff, it's like, oof. Eh, it's, it's just real tedious. It's hard for me to, um, it's hard for me to power through that. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I should set up an idea. Um, I think. Um, I had a plan. I had an idea for my island that I might do at some point. If I ever have the time. It's just, yeah, anything you plan to do, it's like, it's gonna be a lot of work. And I just, I never quite have the time for it. I guess if I make it part of my streams, I'll, you know, that will slot some time for it. But even then, like, there are a lot of times where I don't have the energy to stream or, like, all sorts of other stuff going on. So, we'll see. We'll see. I just always have so many projects in mind, and it's time management. You know? I think you might. Whoa, 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 whoa! a little close there. Well, I lost, but that's all right. I think, yeah, I still tied for first overall. So that's pretty good. What time is it? 2.50. I think I'll call it there. Well, let's look at the results first. Get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Whoa. Ooh.
Okay, I got a couple of them. Cheese Land, I could definitely do better. Animal Crossing. That one's pretty tough, but I, 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 having it the last one at least, you know. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll be able to manage that one with less trouble than I had on the egg cup. But yeah, I got the cup at least. So that'll do it for today. So I want to thank you all very much for choosing Iggy Kid Twitch Streams as your streaming entertainment for today. I know you have a lot of choices in streaming entertainment, so I really appreciate you choosing me. Please uh, take the time to follow and subscribe if you can. Use your Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it, because I know you will. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. Check out the uh, the stream archive channel on YouTube. All of that's linked down below. Check out my Discord. You know, join up. It's a free join. So I'd appreciate seeing y'all in there. And uh, yeah, I I might stream tomorrow. I think I'm gonna reorganize my board games, which is gonna be a, a whole ordeal because I got so many. I gotta pick out which ones I gotta sell. You know, I I, I hit over 130 and I'm like, that's that's gotta be the line. There's so many of these we're never gonna play, even if they're like really cute. So. I gotta go through them. Gotta do it. But that, that'll be for tomorrow. So I hope to see y'all on uh, on Tuesday for more Jack X. I'm gonna finish, hopefully finish it up this week. But we'll see. And hey, if no one else has told you this, I'll tell you this. You're a good kid. All right. Let's find somebody to raid over to. Who's streaming? Who's streaming? People are streaming a lot of uh, Arceus. Since it's the, the new new jam. Mm. Loco and the Skeleton. Let's go with that. Let's go with Loco and the Skeleton. I haven't had the chance to raid over to them in a while. Alright. So yeah, we're gonna raid over to them. Let them know I sent you. Have a great rest of your weekend. Hope to see y'all later in the week. And uh, yeah, have a good one, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. A uh, goodbye. <laughs>